Hey, welcome back. I'm Sean Barn at Looking Point. We help IT organizations make decisions around collaboration, security, and networking. One of the comments we got after doing some of our videos is, hey, could you do a video going over the Jamboard? That's exactly what we're going to do in this video. We're going to cover the Jamboard. But before we do, roll that new intro. We're back and we are talking the Jamboard. Now, before we get into the actual physical appliance, let's talk a little bit about what a jam is. A jam is a space where you can collaborate openly. You can drop images on, you can draw, you can share it with other participants, whether they have a Jamboard like this, a physical Jamboard, or if they have a laptop or a mobile device through a web browser, they can participate in these jams. You can invite people to jams, you can save them for later, and essentially what it is is a digital whiteboard with some intelligence in it. Additionally, this piece of hardware, the Jamboard itself, has a camera, a microphone, and speakers so you could join a conference, a Google Meet uh, meeting if you wanted to. And so the one thing to note about the Jamboard that I've noticed is if you're drawing on the Jamboard and you go into a meeting and you wanted to share content, it's going to turn off the camera. It'll still work with the microphone and the speakers, however it does turn off the camera so it, so it eliminates that video presence as you're leveraging the whiteboard. So let's talk about the features. So if you've used Jams before, it's essentially the same here. We've got our pen tool that we can use here on the right. We can do some cool things like assisted drawing tools. It'll actually take text that you write and convert that into regular text format. And so as an example, I'm gonna select this text assistant here, assisted text, and then I'm going to just draw something like S-E-A-N, which is my name, and it's going to convert that into text, like magic. The other assisting feature that it has is things like shapes. So if I kind of drew a sloppy circle here, it'll correct that to a real circle and I can move that around. Additionally, there's some cool things around art that it does. So if I wanted to draw like a cat, what I thought was a cat, a nose, it gives me some options here. I got a bunny down here, like a sitting bunny, a cat. I got that one, I, that, that's a cat. I could do a bunny, I could do a cat like that. And so you get the idea. So it really starts to make the drawing experience you can bring in real pieces of art. And so it's trying to figure out what we're doing there. Uh, additionally, we've got things like uh, additional tools on the pin tool here. You can pick different colors, you can pick different styles of pins. So as an example, this is kind of like a, uh, I don't know what the, kind of like a marker. Um, and I think, let's see, a paintbrush. This is like a paintbrush. Uh, you can do paintbrush here. And then um, we've got another type of marker. So you can see there's a number of pin tools. Um, I'll go to regular pen, you can see that. It's just, just gonna show you a line. Essentially, those are some of the line or the tools that you can use to draw. Now, if we switch over to eraser, we can just simply erase things, and it does this cool little gradient effect of uh, you know the the lines kind of fading away as it's as you erase. So this over here is like a lasso tool. It's a little arrow, and you can kind of highlight something, and it, it completed it. And now I can move that over here. That lasso tool is kind of handy. Additionally, I could do some notes like hello. I could put a note here if I wanted to basically um, enter that and make that go away. And we can just put these notes wherever we want. That's another thing we can do. Um, additionally, we could get an image. So I could search for a dog. Uh, I'll search for a, a nice little dog here. Ooh, that's a mean dog. This is a happy dog, cute puppy in the snow. We'll put the cute puppy in the snow up there. And then the other thing we can do is an annotation tool. So this is like if you wanted to say, hey, look at the bunny, and you had somebody you were collaborating with, you could use this as like a laser, they call it a laser pointer, but in my mind, it's kind of annotation. Hey, let's talk about Sean, let's talk about the bunny, let's say hello to the new cute dog. So the idea here is that as you're collaborating with somebody not in the room, you could draw their attention to an area where you're thinking about it, and it goes away. Additionally, there's a back button which will undo, undo things, and you can redo them, and you'll kind of see undo, redo. That's essentially it from a Jamboard perspective. Now, you've got some options up here in the top left-hand corner, Jamboard settings. You could open up a new jam. You could send a copy of this jam to somebody. You could share the jam. Um, you could share the code so someone could join with the code. 
and on the far right hand side of the screen we've got our Google Meetings and so we can actually start a meeting right from the Jamboard by just hitting the plus sign. So let's cover the physical aspects of the Jamboard. So it's got a stand, it's got a, a magnetized base so that these things don't really fall off. I don't know if this is, yeah that's magnetized, you gotta put it on the right side. Um, the eraser and the pen, these are the two utilities. The eraser you just put on here and you can wipe and it erases. Additionally, you can select the eraser and use your two fingers and make a smaller or larger eraser, or you can use the pen and it'll do a default sized erasing. We talked a little bit about the features functionality. You can get all these same features and functionality on the web aspect of Jamboards, going to jamboard.google.com. Additionally, with this particular Jamboard, because it has an integrated camera, a microphone, and speaker, you can actually join a Google Meeting by leveraging the top right-hand side of the screen. You just tap that, you can create a new meeting, or you can join a meeting. So if I tap that, it's gonna say join or start a meeting. So if I hit join or start a meeting, it's gonna pull it up and say, hey, let's create a meeting code. You can type in a meeting code, or I can just type in Sean and hit go. And that is going to start our own meeting. And so we're, we're in a meeting. Um, that's the meeting nickname. I can share this link to someone else and then they could join into my meeting. And what you're seeing in the background is just our video studio that we have here. So uh, I will get back to the drawing screen. Now uh, for clearing your frame, you can clear this frame and we can start over. So let's say you're drawing along and you fill up this screen and you want to add uh, more space or more real estate to your whiteboard, you could just hit the next arrow and it's going to create a new screen. And as you fill up content and you go uh, onto these different screens, essentially you are just creating more pages that you can scroll through within the jam and keep growing your content. One of the things I really wish you could do is scale this infinitely so you could zoom in and zoom out. There's some other boards that do that. I really like that feature because the paging thing just seems a little, I don't know, it just seems kind of funky to me. Um, I would rather have the ability to scale and you know maybe also the page, so having both worlds so I could make this bigger or smaller. And maybe you can do that. I just can't find a way to scale this, this landscape. So essentially you're locked into this this size whiteboard space and you use the page to get more more real estate um, and then you can jump between pages directly by just tapping on the actual page you could actually add a page between those two if you wanted to to if you're doing this more of like hey phase one phase two phase three oh we forgot we should really do something else here between phase one and phase two you can just hit the plus sign and add a page in between that and so that's how you're going to use the Jamboard a great use case for this would be a space where you're in a meeting room where you want to openly collaborate and you want to easily be able to share content or take content away that you discussed in that particular meeting. I don't know if I see the Jamboard as a collaboration device in the true sense of video collaboration just because it doesn't, you can't join anything outside of Google itself. If you're a hundred percent within Google, this is a great, great device. But if you had maybe some third party bridging software, like maybe you're joining a Zoom room or a Cisco WebEx room, you couldn't join via SIP that I know of. I think really the only way that you can bring these Jamboards into a traditional meeting is to use something like PECSIP where you're bridging SIP integrations into the Jamboard as opposed to the Jamboard dialing out to those SIP connections. So that's one thing that I think if you're thinking about a board and you're going to collaborate using the video and voice technology, I would recommend looking at a board solution that can dial out SIP. And from what I've seen at this point, the Jamboard really can't do that. So other than that, it's a great looking piece of, piece of hardware. I really like the stand. The stand is amazing. They've designed it in a way that you can get it in and out of tight spaces, doors. Uh, specifically, you can get it in and out of a conference room without worrying about the base not fitting. They've got the wheels out wide enough so it's really, really stable. I mean, the thing isn't going to fall over if you're moving on it. So uh, it's really a good design from a base perspective. And now this display is super heavy. So if you're assembling it, you're going to need two people to lift it up. I tried to lift it up myself and I was kind of fumbling around and trying to get it and I just could not get it on this stand without the help of some other people. 
And look, we've got our little guest access splashing up as it's trying to join the wireless network. All right, so that kind of covers all my thoughts on the Jamboard, a little bit of an overview on it. I think, you know, it looks really slick in an environment. The stand looks really nice. I think it's a great tool if you're gonna be leveraging it to whiteboard, to share content, you wanna take it out of the conference room and you wanna bring in other collaborators into that to that content, I think is a great device for that. If I said anything in this video that you're like, hey, I'd love to know more about that, make sure you leave a comment, make sure you like and subscribe so you get all of our content as we release it. And we will see you on the next Tech Talk. Thanks for watching.